Great stuff. Thanks for joining us for it. I'm Zai Tong. And I'm Dan Riskin. We have scoured the globe looking for amazingness. And guess what? We found some. That's right. Like this, the age-old question, why did the hippo cross the road? And the double-decker couch. Oh, it's real. And oh, yes, we are going to sit on it. But first, we're all about embracing the fun here. You think maybe you're a grown-up, you have to leave all your favorite childhood games behind? Oh, no, no. That is not the case at all. In fact, you can just make them better. It feels like you're being slingshot into a water slide. Fast and wet. <laughs> we are the team with Axis Flight School, and this is our version of the slip and slide. Given that we do this professionally, um, skydiving can get, I don't want to say boring, but we definitely do look for new challenges and ways to keep it interesting. So this just seemed like a logical thing to do in the middle of summer when it's hot, and try to find a way to cool off. The slip and slide was 75 meters. We had to be careful that all of it was staked into the ground uh, very strongly because some of the speeds that we come in, uh, initially they're very fast, probably roughly around freeway speeds. Um, and then as our bodies land on it, there's going to be a lot of friction. So um, in addition to having water on there, we also used, um, I believe it was baby shampoo to try and lubricate it a little bit more so that we have absolutely no friction on it. We approach um, roughly from around 90 degrees to the landing area, and then we initiate a 90 degree turn. We try to control the descent by using our, um, by in our inputs and then essentially forcing the recovery of that parachute at the right time to build up all that speed and then direct that towards the slip and slide. It's a lot of fun because normally once we land and we start sliding across the grass, we naturally start slowing down. But when we land on the slip and slide because of all the water, uh, we actually don't slow down at all. And then in some cases when we cut away our parachute after we landed, we actually accelerate. Some of the newest technology that we have with parachutes is square parachutes. Uh, square parachutes are much more maneuverable, so uh, we are able to control right and left and flaring. So it's essentially just knowing how to pilot the parachute and being able to get where you want to, uh, knowing how to get there, and definitely experience helps with that. Since we're trying to land in the exact same space, we're try we basically separate ourselves by time. So um, we pre-planned who was going to land first, uh, second and third, and we tried to get at least somewhere between 15 to 20 seconds, if not more, in between so to stage our landing, so to speak, so that we don't collide with each other. Nick purposely landed right next to me in order to get outside footage of me going across. Uh, sometimes we get shot out the end a little bit further than we expect, but uh, no, we definitely uh, hit it every time feels great. It's a lot of fun being able to still be able to play as an adult, you know, still be able to have kind of the mindset of a kid and just go out and explore and play. <laughs> 